How exhaust condensers work with Alex Cairns, part two, using my Stuart triple expansion engine to demonstrate the condenser layout. Exhaust condensers are starting to make sense to me now. Alex explains the Edwards pump that in the model world is the type that is fitted to the Stuart triple expansion engine. After this video, I'll look at condensers in an entirely different way. The separate condenser is affixed to the side of the steam engine or somewhere else even, but it consists of a closed chamber. The closed chamber is connected at the top end to the exhaust of the engine. In this case we have a marine triple, no better way to show off a condenser. The condenser doesn't exist on this, the wet air pump does, but the condenser doesn't exist. So we're going to pretend right now that we have an old-fashioned watt jet condenser. It would be a closed chamber, very simply, and with one pipe coming from somewhere else, either above or below the engine, with a small cooling water pipe that comes in through the side of the chamber, and once inside, there's a little spray head. It wouldn't be efficient if the water just entered through a hole and fell to the bottom. The goal is to cool as much of the steam as possible with as little water as possible, so we want something that sprays an atomized uh, mist of water or droplets of water all around in there so that the steam going from the top down has to hit water on the way down. When the steam is cooled sufficiently by the spray of water, it collapses in volume over 1600 times. Because it's in a closed space where no air can enter to fill this void, a tremendous vacuum is created. We're talking something like 25 or better inches of mercury, whereas the total vacuum is 30. Now, in the bottom of this closed chamber, otherwise closed chamber, the Condensed steam, which is now water again, will land in the bottom along with any of the cooling water that's sprayed in through that head. Our challenge is now we have to get it out without destroying the vacuum of the condenser because the vacuum, which we'll talk about later, is adding a lot of extra horsepower to this steam engine. A lot of extra horsepower. But in any case, we need to get the water out, the condensate and the cooling water out. That is what this pump is for. You will see on all the big beam engines, all the compound and triple and quadruple and all of these power plant steam engines that, that you find, these sort of bucket shaped pumps. Now this is called an Edwards pump and I want everyone who watches your video, I want everyone everywhere to know what this is because a lot of people don't know what this pump is for because in the hobby scene and stuff it's rarely used. In fact, a lot of the time I've seen these engines, marine engines, put in model boats that, that work and go across lakes, and this pump is just along for the ride, out of service, not connected to anything. The Edwards pump is the integral part of actually operating the condenser, whether it's a jet condenser or a surface condenser. A jet condenser does not need a cooling water pump because the cooling water is drawn up by the vacuum of the condenser. In fact, when you start the engine, it's the Edwards pump itself, which is a vacuum pump built to handle wet uh, wet gases. It's the Edward pump itself that starts the condensing jet because the first few revolutions of the engine that pump makes a few strokes which is just enough if it's tight and everything is arranged right to suck enough water up that cooling water tube like a straw to start the cooling jet in the condenser and as soon as the exhaust steam comes out of that engine instead of flooding and pressurizing the condenser it begins to collapse this creates a bigger vacuum which draws more cooling water up to the jet condenser, accelerates the process, the engine will then turn faster and away you go. The Edwards pump itself consists of a bucket shaped piston inside this bore. The piston itself is also a check valve. Sometimes in a, in a big one where the piston is like, you know, four feet diameter, there are many check valves, but in other ones like this model, it'll be like a rubber flap that goes across the whole thing, or three or four little uh, rubber discs on springs. And the way it works is, the bottom of the pump is a little well. It is connected to the bottom of the condenser, which will be appreciably above the bottom of the pump. So anything in the condenser falls into the bottom of the pump by gravity. When the piston comes down, the check valves are open because these check valves face upward, open for things traveling upward through the piston and closed for anything trying to go back the other way and into and toward the condenser. On the bottom of the condenser there will be a pipe leaving and then immediately a check valve. We call this the foot valve. This is the first um, step of protection to stop things from destroying the vacuum of the condenser by coming in the other way. Now after the foot valve we go from there directly to the bottom of this pump. Anything in the condenser will fall, go through the foot valve, which is a one-way valve going from the condenser to the bottom of the uh, Edwards pump. With the piston at the top of the bore, 
Any water from the condenser will come down and fill this pump by gravity through the foot valve. When the piston comes down, because the piston is also a check valve, it will be as if the piston is not there. It's easily traveled through. The piston will come down with the check valves open through the charge of water to the bottom, where we are now. Now we're ready to begin the discharge cycle. When the engine begins to lift the pump piston, the check valves on the piston slam shut. It lifts whatever water is now above it that has just come through with it and out this top pipe to wherever it's going, the hot well usually. With the Edwards pump piston at the top of the stroke, you see here it's connected right to the engine's low pressure crosshead. It's driven by the engine. It's very important. Uh, water from the condenser, if there's any, will be up to a certain level in this cylinder. It can be any level at all. And when the piston comes down, remember the piston is also a check valve. And on the way down, the checks in that piston open, and the piston travels right through that charge of water until it hits the bottom. Now we're ready to begin what's called the suction stroke. With the piston at the bottom and a charge of water above it, when the engine begins to lift the piston, the check valves in the piston slam closed and any water above it comes with it in an upward direction and out the discharge pipe and it goes to wherever it's going, we'll cover that later. And at the same time, while it's discharging that charge of water that it's got, it's also, because the piston is now a piston with closed check valves, it's also going to draw the next charge of water from the condenser through the foot valve, which is opening one way this way, into the bottom of itself. And the key with this pump is, it can generate a higher vacuum than the condenser can. So if the condenser can make 25 inches, this pump will be able to make darn near 30, like almost a total vacuum. The vacuum in the condenser is not being created by the pump. It's being created by the continuous collapse of steam into water from the cooling action. The pump is only removing the condensate to stop the condenser from flooding with water completely. And also not allowing the vacuum in the condenser to be destroyed because we have two check valves. One is the piston, the other is the foot valve to protect it. Once we finish discharging, then we send it back on the charge stroke with the piston going down again with this next charge of water that was just drawn in. The piston is going to travel down through that charge of water again with open check valves to the bottom where we repeat the cycle. And the nice thing about this is it's self-regulating. If the condenser completely dries out of water and there's only steam between it and the bottom of the pump, we can lose the vacuum. And if the condenser floods with water, it will stop working completely because the steam and the cooling water won't be able to get inside. However, if the condenser is cleverly placed vertically in relation to the bottom of this pump... The full unedited versions of these interviews are now available to view on the A.E. Cairns Patreon channel. And that's it for today's video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.